Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're looking at a reasonably complicated math topic. The topic is exponential growth and decay and it draws from several of our previously covered topics, principle among which is probably percentages, so definitely give that one a watch before you take a look at this one. Anyway, let's see what we got. Okay, exponential growth and decay. What does that mean? Well, growth and decay we're aware of. Growth means to get bigger, or grow, and decay, well, decay often has sort of a morbid connotation, but in this case, decay just means to get smaller, to become less. So growth and decay, more, less. Exponential, well, exponential just means has an exponent in the equation. If we can limit our thinking to this extent, we can actually get through a lot more questions more quickly. So looking at the examples that are provided here, which of the following do you think would be an exponential equation? Well, certainly not A because that's linear. What some people may pick with is B, but what the issue there is, there's just a number right there. So an exponential growth or decay equation will have an input, a variable, as the exponent. In this case, the exponent is just a constant and the input is still a value. It's not until option C here, we have three to the X, we see our first exponential, first and only exponential equation because the constant is three, but we're always raising to a different exponent. And if we wonder what this would look like, by the way, if we take a second to ignore the 2000 here as the, that's just gonna be a function shift up or down, um, three to the X is gonna look like this. As, as we start with, three to the zero, which is one. And then as that exponent increases, this is gonna increase exponentially because we're gonna be tripling every time we reach a new integer. So three to the 10 is already a really, really big number. So exponential growth has the potential to get an output value to be very large very quickly. Or in the uh, case of decay, something very small very quickly. And then here indeed, that's just the, another linear equation. That's one half X plus 2000, which is also a straight line. Okay, moving on to a bit more equations. So here is sort of a very generalized and simple equation for an exponential equation. So we have y, which is always our output. And then we have our initial value. So we need to start someplace. We multiply that by a rate. And then we have whatever our input is there for our growth. So so as an example, maybe we say something like we're in we're in a city and then there is an initial 50 people who have heard of a certain musical band and they all like to tell their friends. And so everybody's going to tell two of their friends every two hours about this band. So every two hours are effectively going to double in size. So that's two to the X say 50 and we have two and then x is the number of two hour intervals between when these people start telling each other so very quickly we're gonna have more people who know about this band than there are in the world but aside from that it's very very simple instance where we have a starting value we have a rate of growth and we have the input how many of those growths have occurred and so one application of exponential growth and decay which you'll see very often very very often in in the real world is interest and compounding growth and decay there. So the example here, how much money would you have in a bank account yielding 5% interest annually after 10 years in that account uh, with only a one-time initial deposit of $1,000? So what that's telling you is we basically have a general equation of Y equals whatever that initial deposit is multiplied by our growth rate. So this is why knowing percentages is so important for exponential growth and decay because you need to understand that 1.05 is 5% growth. If you were to say this is 0.05 rather than 1.05, that would be a 95% decay because the 5% is what we gain, but we still have our initial value. You know, we're not gonna lose a thousand bucks for having this bank in this money in the bank account for a year. We're gonna make 50 bucks. We have our initial deposit times our rate of growth to our time, which may be T or Y or anything like that. And generally, I think that's pretty pretty sensible to people. That makes a pretty good amount of sense. Uh, the next thing we'll look at here becomes a bit more challenging, but just remember that on these tests, it will never get too complicated. 
it's never going to be like finance 101 or anything to the extent that you'd see in a business class. Okay, and in the second example here, we add a slight bit of complexity that we see. A new car has an initial value of $25,000 and loses 12% of its value annually, and it is compounded monthly. So what that means is basically that 12% annual decay happens in little chunks every month. And so instead of being, you know, if you lose 12% of your value, you've got 88% of your value left after you. Instead of it being 88 to the power of one year, we're instead doing that 12 times a year, but at one twelfth of the, of the rate. So I did 12 here just to make this nice even 0.01. So that's gonna be 0.99, the power of 12 times whatever that number of years is because we're doing that 12 times in a year. And so in the case of this question here, 12.5 is what we put in for Y right there. And just to put all these numbers together, it's gonna be 25,000 times 0.99 to the power of 30 because 12 times 2.5 is 30. And so for this, what I have here, this will often just be an answer. If they actually wanted you to get a value here, this would certainly be a calculator question. It's something you could easily do in your calculator. For this kind of question, you would just need to make sure that you were being very careful with your order of operations. It's very easy to get confused with which is going where because we have exponents and exponents always come first, except obviously after parentheses. All right, next we'll take a look at some practice problems. We have two here. We'll just look at one at a time. Go ahead and try the first one and see what you can do. All right, let's take a look. So a certain type of bacteria doubles in number every two hours. If there are initially 20 bacteria in a sample, how many bacteria will there be after 10 hours? So what this is saying as an equation is we initially have 20, multiply that by two. They, so it's to say it doubles every two hours. And so we have this H kind of here, and we want to represent this really as H over two because it needs to be every two hours that this happens. So this wouldn't happen 10 times, this would only happen five times. That would be 20 times two to the 10 over two, which is five. And two to the five is two, four, eight, 16, 32. And so that's 32 times 20, which is 64 with a zero. And we see there that 640 is our answer. So pretty straightforward. All right, next question here, see what you can do with this one. All right, let's take a look. So Susan invests $5,000 in a savings account with an annual interest rate of 4% compounded quarterly. How much money will she have in the account after five years? So what we have here is 5,000 is our initial value. Then we have 4% compounded quarterly. So that's gonna be 1.04, but that 0.04 right there is gonna be divided by four because there's four quarters in a year, which is pretty convenient. That's gonna be 1.01 as our rate for every quarter. So that's 5,000 times 1.01. And there, how many quarters are there in five years? Well, five times four is 20. And just pulling out my calculator here, 1.01 to the 20 times 5,000 is around $6,100. And yes, this is absolutely going to be a calculator question, so either an ACT question or an SAT calculator question. So pretty straightforward. Okay, that's it for this video. While exponential growth and decay can sound a little bit intimidating, the way that it's applied and utilized on the SAT and ACT rarely gets that complicated. So as you're approaching these questions, remember to keep it simple and stick to the equations I've provided today. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video and subscribe to Quad Education. If you require any additional tutoring, please reach out to us. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.